The Ark of Elbaf has officially begun, and something very weird is happening. But maybe you didn't notice exactly how weird it was. So let me lay it out. One second, the Strats were living it up, they were partying, and the next second, nobody knows what happened. But half the Straw Hat crew and the Sunny is gone. We see them a short time later, and presumably they have somehow magically appeared in Elbaf, in a land of Legos, already dressed like hot Vikings. They have no idea how they got here. You have a cat wearing a crown that can suddenly transform into a lion. The Lego castle where we begin is actually proportionally designed for regular sized humans, not giants. And in the carnage of the battle, we can see skeletons, which are also the size of regular humans. No skeletons of giants to be found. But that's not to say that we don't see giants or actual residents of this village. But an argument can be made that they are not so giant. They refer to a rabbit which they call their ear god as enormous, and are totally shocked that such a creature could be defeated. Personally, I think that it is intuitive to believe that the ear god is roughly the same size as the cat that these strats fight. I would heavily guess that this cat wearing a crown is some other kind of god, like the claw god as an example. Obviously a very big creature, but nowhere near the size of an actual giant. So if the rabbit is the same, why would the giants refer to it as enormous? And if the rabbit is actually bigger and closer to the size of actual giants, then how the hell did Luffy eat it? Luffy has a big stomach, but that kind of pushes the limits. So it makes you wonder whether the giants that we see are actually the size of humans, or perhaps the Straw Hats are now suddenly the size of giants. There's also a popular theory going around right now that Oda was more inconsistent while drawing the chapter than he has ever been. Like I'm talking about small mistakes. Luffy's Straw Hat does not appear. Nami has a sword and sheath, but then she doesn't. It basically transforms into her staff, but her staff does not have a hilt. Something similar happens with Luffy where he doesn't have a weapon, then it appears like he has a sword, then suddenly that sword has become an ax with a totally different handle. So I just wanna make this abundantly clear, right? Something weird is happening in the island of Elbaf. I feel like we should legitimately ask the question of what is real and what is not. Our eyes are playing tricks on us, and I have a crazy theory as to why. So strap yourselves in, apply your tinfoil judiciously, remember to subscribe if you're enjoying the content. Let's begin. Hey YouTube, Joe Boy here. So, I would say that my impression of Elbaf right now, which is obviously subject to change if we learn something new, but my impression right now is that it reminds me a lot of a video game. The land of Legos obviously contributes to this. Basically, all of the strats are playable characters and you're fiddling with their gear, their loadouts, and the world is glitching. But describing it in this way makes a connection kind of clear because it makes you think about Egghead. That arc also felt like a video game, not least of which was the actual references to video games, but you have this consistent flavor of illusions or things that are there aren't really there or aren't as they appear to be. From food synthesizers to walls that aren't really there but suddenly are actually there to actual holograms, Egghead blurred the line of reality. So I just want you to bear with me for a little while. It'll make sense more as the video continues, but let's just run with this. What if this similarity between Egghead and Elbaf is because Dr. Vegapunk was inspired? by Elbaf. I don't think this is the craziest thought I've ever had. Vegapunk is a genius who has designed some of the most incredible things in the One Piece world, but he consistently did this with reference to things that already existed. In Egghead, we see a lot of automata. These little robots look very similar to the very same ones that Enel discovers on the moon and are ancient. Or another thing that Vegapunk was heavily involved in is the recreation of devil fruits. He created an artificial devil fruit. Momonosuke ate this and became a pink dragon, but it was based on the original. Likewise, Dr. Vegapunk tells us that the ancient giant robot was something that he utilized in order to help him invent. Things such as the mother flame. But we don't ever really get an explanation for his interest in holograms. He was even trying to devise a way to physically interact with them. He wanted to make the holograms real to people's usable senses. Maybe that idea is actually based on something. So we know for sure that Dr. Vegapunk has visited the island of Elbaf and that there is a connection there. This is where Ohara's books are stored. So basically what I'm saying guys is that whatever the strats are experiencing right now, it's possible 
that Vegapunk experienced himself. Chapter 1062 at the beginning of Egghead is titled Adventure in the Land of Science. Most recently in chapter 1127 at the beginning of Elbaf, the chapter title is Adventure in the Land of Mystery. Both chapters have quote unquote monsters eating straw hats and make you question reality. It would not be crazy for Vegapunk to have experienced Elbaf. He had to try to understand it and recreate it, which better explains Egghead. But even further than this, I really love this theory because Egghead was the island of the future, which was in fact designed based on the past, based on the ancient kingdom. Elbaf is also an island of the past. It just feels like a place that has not changed for hundreds of years, kind of like Wano. It is also an island that most likely is directly connected to the ancient kingdom. The giants still worship the sun god, aka Joy Boy. This is a place we're told that the world government has basically been unable to penetrate. They've been unable to influence, meaning guys straight up, some relics of the ancient kingdom might be found there. Guys, what would you think if we found advanced technology from the ancient kingdom in Elbaf? Maybe it's just me, but personally, I think that that would be pretty cool. To come clean with you though, I don't just think that ancient kingdom relics might be found in Elbaf. I, I think I know that we will 100% find ancient kingdom relics, but they're not in a form that you're expecting. So let me explain. I think that it's natural based on our current society that when people think about science and technology, they think about machinery, they think about metals, they think about computer chips. But when applied to the story of One Piece, I think that this leads you down the wrong track. It's misleading, at least partially. So I have a question, when you think about the ancient giant robot from Egghead, what is your first thought? Is your thought of like, wow, giant robot, complex machinery? It's a fair thought to have. But the single wildest thing about the ancient giant robot has nothing to do with its body. The craziest thing is that Emmet is alive and has a personality. To continue, what was your exact thought when it was foreshadowed or it was implied that Joy Boy left a special weapon within Emmet? Did you perhaps think that Emmet had a bomb within him, that he was going to explode? Because that's certainly what I thought, but the truth was quite different. Instead, we get what appears to be a simple rope knot that when untied, releases a blast of Conqueror's Hockey that Joy Boy stored around 800 years ago. So I guess Emmet technically was a bomb, but it was the weirdest bomb that you could imagine. Conqueror's Hockey is essentially somebody's will, their willpower. So the energy which powered this quote unquote bomb was the energy of life. I think that you can think of it like Joy Boy's soul, trapped in the form of like potential energy of a tied knot. It is the simplest, most advanced thing that I have ever seen. So this is what I mean when I say that the idea of technology as we know it in current society can be misleading. I'm absolutely certain that the ancient kingdom was advanced in ways that we think about advanced civilizations, but they're also advanced in a way that our current civilization doesn't understand, which honestly captures the idea of future technology in a way that I'm not sure that any other science fiction really does. The ancient kingdoms were masters of life and the energy of life. You can even think about Vegapunk's mother flame. Vegapunk tells us that he is striving for this eternal flame, this unlimited energy source. And he tells us that the closer that he gets to that power, the closer he gets to whatever powered Emmet in the past. And in Egghead, for the first time in hundreds of years, something Vegapunk had not personally seen himself, Emmet turned back on. His power source was rediscovered, and it is implied that he did so because of Luffy. Luffy awakening his fruit, becoming the sun god Nika. Vegapunk was so straight up about this. He told us in chapter 1068 that his dream was about providing unlimited, abundant energy to the world. The world was teeming with it, he said. And in the same chapter, that's the thing. My quest to further my understanding of energy led me to investigate the ancient fuel that powered this mechanical soldier. So the natural thought that this leaves us with is the unlimited energy source that powered Emmet in the past. The thing the smartest person in the world couldn't quite figure out was the power of Nika, or more directly, the power of laughter and joy, or just straight up freedom and the drums of liberation. So I think that you should think about the technology of the ancient kingdom in a slightly different way or a more encompassing way. It was obviously very advanced in terms of technology as we understand it. But I think that the real secret that the ancient kingdom unlocked is the power of humanity and of life itself. So when you're thinking about advanced technology in the world of One Piece, you need to think about it as like a merger of science and nature. They basically figured out the science of spirituality. 
So I'm gonna get a little bit more wild for just a second, but I promise you there is a purpose to it. When you're talking about the holograms and the illusions in the island of Egghead, you're talking about Vegapunk's ability to manipulate light. Guys, what we see and why we see it has everything to do with light. That's how our eyes as an organ functions. We have extremely specialized and evolved structures within our eyes that are able to interact with the light. And then we convert it to signals that go to our brain, which tell us exactly what we are seeing. So if you wanna manipulate what we are seeing so that we can see things that aren't really there, that's kind of how you would begin. You could also theoretically do this for our other senses, like for instance, touch, right? We touch things and then it sends a signal to our brain telling us what it is that we touched and what that feels like. So you could potentially meddle with that as well. Essentially trick the brain that you are seeing something and that it has an actual substance to it. It is the realm of science fiction, but it is conceivable. But this is where we need to separate our ideas of science from how the story of One Piece works. Light is energy, or more specifically, visible light, which is the light that actually interacts with our eyes, is a very small sliver of the energy of our sun. This is a theory I've discussed a couple times on my channel, but it bears repeating. In the story of One Piece, humanity itself, or the human soul, is also a form of energy or a power source. This is essentially your justification for hockey. It's the energy of a person in some kind of usable form that they're able to manipulate. As Emu unintentionally explained, lives are light and these lights can be erased. This is a direct comparison between lives and energy. I believe that thinking about a person as a flame or as a tiny sun is accurate. I actually think that life is a higher form or a greater form of energy than light itself. It's a superior power source. Because like I said, visible light is just a small fragment. It's a small sliver of the energy of the sun. But life is much closer to the whole thing, a tiny sun. Or perhaps as a more tangible example, if you need it, Kizaru the light man was able to shoot lasers, which are light beams. Sanji was able to kick it, something that baffled everybody, including Kizaru. And Sanji's reasoning for being able to do that is the power of love. Love is greater than light. So through this conversation, I think that what naturally happens is you get a better understanding of the power of the sun god Nika. The sun god Nika is called the sun god Nika because its power is similar to the sun. Everything that exists around us was created inside of a star. A star is essentially everything in energy form. So this is why Nika can do anything because Nika similar to the sun is everything. Everything that exists or could exist. Nika is basically life on steroids. It is the power of an individual soul, amplified many times. So let's finally take this somewhere. We already know that the giants of Elbaf worship the sun god. I think that Luffy being Nika is going to become a very important aspect of this arc, but not just in terms of the plot. I'm also thinking about this in terms of the setting. A detail about Elbaf that I think a lot of people forgot was actually revealed to us in Big Mom's flashback. This was where we got to see the island for the very first time. Both the island as in the little village with the giants of Elbaf that we are familiar with, but also a more macro view of the island from afar. Now, the first thing that you'll notice about this panel is it's not really reflective of the Elbaf that we've seen with Nami and Luffy and the crew in the most recent chapters. You have this like huge mountain range and a tree which absolutely dominates the island. This tree and the tree Yggdrasil as revealed in the most recent chapter is not the same, clearly. But if you're perceptive, you can notice something in the center of the panel. It's there but intentionally obscured, either too far away to properly see, or in some way invisible, but it looks a lot like a tree. Watching the anime adaptation of this very same panel makes this even clearer. In the anime, it almost appears as if this structure clearly drawn in the center of the manga panel is not there at all, but it is in fact there. They didn't forget to include it. Using effects on the still can bring the structure to life. The effects have determined that something is in fact there but it's totally invisible. This should sound alarms in your head. Something is present on the island of Elbaf, which is invisible. Why would something be invisible? Well guys, my answer to this is because of how it interacts with light. This structure, in my opinion, confirms our impression 
of the beginning of Elbaf. Something has the ability to distort reality, distort our perceptions. And I think that that thing is this invisible tree. Maybe you think that that's absurd, but you really shouldn't. There's already a special tree in the world of One Piece which has an interesting and unique relationship with light. This tree is called the Sunlight Eve Tree. Supposedly, it takes in the light from the sun above and then transfers that light to its roots, where it then provides the light to Fishman Island. So I am not speculating that this tree is Sunlight Eve. We already know that that tree exists somewhere in and around Marijoie. What I am speculating is that there is another tree in the world of One Piece, a unique tree, which has a relationship with light, or a relationship with the sun. But of course, none of this surprises you, right? Because Luffy is the main character, and Joy Boy was the main character of the Void Century, and both of these people are the sun god. So I said before that we would find advanced technology on the island of Elbaf, and I was almost certain that that would be the case, but it's a little bit misleading. What I'm talking about is this tree. People often disregard this, they often forget this, but botany is a science. And if you can genetically enhance people, you can definitely genetically enhance plants. But let's explain in more detail. There is, in my opinion, no doubt that Joy Boy was friends with the various races of the One Piece world. If he was a pirate, they were on his crew. Similar to Luffy, actually. One of the ancient weapons of the ancient kingdom, a known friend of Joy Boy, is the mermaid princess. Poseidon. The fishmen also possessed in the past two poneglyphs. We also see poneglyphs guarded by other races. You have the winged people of Shandora. You also have the minks on Zo. They were charged with protecting Joy Boy's message, meaning they were allies, friends, and potentially on Joy Boy's crew. It is also for this reason and several others that many people expect to find a road poneglyph on the island of Elbaf, historically guarded by the giants. So when you think of the various races in the One Piece world in a historical context, in a void century context, you should think that they were probably allied with Joy Boy. So that brings us to the Tantara. I think that if you think too much about it, when you consider all the highlighted races in the story of One Piece, most people would include Tantara in that list. But we don't see them guarding a Poneglyph. Their connection to the Void Sentry is not as clear. But if a clue exists, I think that it exists in the small details. In Dressrosa, it is revealed that the Tantata's greatest strength, their skill, is in the nurturing of plants. If it can be grown, they are the ones that can grow it. And we get firsthand evidence of this in Dressrosa because Doflamingo and Caesar's scheme with Smile was not possible without the enslavement of the Tantata. Smile was incredibly difficult to grow. The Tantata called the fruits unnatural, but they could grow them. And we may or may not get back to this in more detail, but the only reason they were able to grow them is through the use of elegant sunflowers, which was the light source for the fruit, which covered the Smile factory's roof, replacing the light of the sun. And I think that there's other subtle clues elsewhere. Mont Blanc Noland was, by profession, a botanist. Nolan was also effectively the Gold D. Roger of his era. And even in the present story, I'm not sure if Usopp has been officially labeled as a botanist, but that is effectively what he is. But everybody expects Usopp to have a huge role in Elbaf, something that has been built up for decades. Perhaps his affinity for plants matters. But really what I want to convey here is that botany, or the science of plants, is important to the Void Century. This was the important function of the Tantata. So when you're talking about the advanced technology of the Void Century or before, do not, absolutely do not exclude plants. I think that everybody basically understands that the trees, the unique trees in the story of One Piece are important, but just logically realize that for some plant to be unique, it probably means that it is not entirely natural. Natural plants proliferate. You see more than one of them. I believe that Yggdrasil was grown by the Tantata with the assistance of advanced botany, and it possesses special properties and was made for a reason. So I think that it's officially time to wrap up this theory. I believe that the tree Yggdrasil was made with reference to, and is similar to, the sun god Nika. If humans have lineage factors, plants do as well. It is DNA. If science can alter the lineage factor of humans so that their DNA is spliced with the lineage factor of other things, then the same can conceivably occur with plants. So I think that the tree Yggdrasil might possess the lineage factor 
of Nika, achieved through the power of science. Using his double fruit, Luffy is able to manipulate the world around him, effectively bringing his imagination or his dreams to life. I believe that this tree has a similar ability. The cat turned into a lion because that is what it wanted or how it saw itself. And it's possible it transformed back into a cat because of how others saw it. It could do this because it was near the tree. In Nolan and Kagura's flashback, we are introduced to these special trees. They're called sacred trees. They were a natural naturally white, kind of like Nika. And the mythos behind them is that these trees collected the souls of the Shandian's ancestors. This is why the Golden Belfry was so important to their society. The sound of this joyous music supposedly called the souls of their ancestors back home, back to the trees, where they would reside for eternity. Now, I don't really think that these sacred trees were exactly what the Shandians thought that they were, but I think that the legend is actually based on something that did exist in the world. I believe that Yggdrasil is a sacred tree, and within it resides the souls of the deceased and their desires or their dreams. This is what I see to be the connection between Nika and the tree. The tree possesses this ultimate power source, the power of life or of humanity. And to be fully transparent with you, I think that this is the case for some of the other great trees as well. They are trees of light or trees of life. Sunlight Eve is kind of obvious, but this also could be the case for a hypothetical devil fruit tree as well. That is, if the devil fruit tree exists and is not Eve or this tree that we see in Elbaf. But yeah, the theory kind of makes itself after you get Vegabunk's explanation of what devil fruit are incarnations of people's desires or their dreams. Also sounds a lot like Nika, doesn't it? Earlier, I called Nika life on steroids. Inside of the Fishman's national treasure, the Tamate Bako were literally steroids. Steroids which gave them great power and also turned them white. And not coincidentally, after the effects wore off, they became very old, which is precisely what happens to Luffy with the Devil Fruit. They consumed their own life force, and this life force is comparable to Nika. What I am saying guys is that during the void century the people of the ancient kingdom and joy boy manipulated and used the lineage factor of nika scientifically you should also be thinking about mink sulong nika holds the secret to the energy of life and i personally think similar to the ancestor trees from shandora it derives its power from the inherited will luffy and nika is a conduit to the souls of others including the deceased and their desires or dreams but let's get back to yggdrasil i think that a pertinent question right now that one might have is what exactly is the point of this tree? Why did somebody create it? Or why does it exist? And I think that there's a couple ways of looking at it. You could look at it in like a purely simple Luffy-like way. The island of Elbaf could have been important during the time of the Void Century, if for no other reason than entertainment. It was an island of dreams, of fantasy. I fully expect this going forward, but we've said this on numerous occasions. I will say it again. The name Elbaf was created because it is fable spelled backwards. I'm expecting the Strats to encounter a lot of things that don't actually exist. This island could have been a version of Sabaody Park, or a place which looks like or feels a lot like you are dropped into a video game. But I would say that this is your more carefree answer. It could also have religious importance given that the sun god has been worshipped for a very long time. A tree which reflects Nika would obviously have been holy to people who believed in Nika. But if Joy Boy was anything like Luffy, and we're led to believe that Joy Boy was a lot like Luffy, none of this would really matter to him. So this leaves us with the last theory that I think is the most important. I think that this tree was part of Joy Boy's plan to save the world. It may not seem this way right now, but I think that this tree or the other tree that we see in Elbaf is tall enough to reach the clouds. This is kind of significant considering the recent reveal from Vegapunk that the world is destined to flood. The tree then becomes one of the few places where life still exists on land. A literal world tree, Yggdrasil, the world tree from Norse mythology. I don't think that people have yet fully considered how Vegapunk's message changes the purpose of something like the Noah. The Noah, which is the ship that features predominantly in the Fishman Island arc, is obviously a reference to the Bible. I want you to keep that in mind. Uh, and Noah's Ark. But I think that the impression that the community has had for many years now is that the Noah kind of exists in the case that the world floods, that it becomes a bastion of humanity. It saves everyone just like in the story of Noah. But a fundamental difference is that in the story of Noah, the flood comes and then it goes. The creatures saved by Noah don't have to live on the ship forever. But in the story of One Piece, the impression that Vegapunk leaves us is that when the world floods, this is 
basically permanent. The people won't be able to return to their home islands. So the real purpose of the Noah is to gather the people of the world and take them to a place where they could survive. Elbaf and Yggdrasil, the world tree. You could even go so far as to speculate that because the world tree bends reality or bends your perception of reality, that its size or its scope, its ability to house people, is actually unlimited because it can change. You can perhaps think of it like the Room of Requirement from Harry Potter. It was meant to be the home of the entire world, should the world be destroyed. But let's return to concepts from the Bible. I think that everybody understands at this point in time that Oda has taken inspiration from Jesus in regards to Nika. Kuma, a believer in Nika, carries around a Bible. It is literally written on the book Bible. In Kuma's church dedicated to Nika, we see a cross. Mother Carmel, who most likely taught the religion of Nika in Elbaf, was designed based on a nun. It's interesting that in regards to Luffy awakening his Nika devil fruit, most likely it seems like he had to die first. So Luffy was resurrected. And there exists a prophecy in the world of One Piece that Joy Boy or that Nika is destined to one day return to save the world, just similar to the Bible. You could say so, so, so much more than this, but I think that you get it. Guys, I think that Elbaf is supposed to be the kingdom of light. In the Bible, the kingdom of light or the kingdom of God is heaven. This is John 8, 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. From the context of this video, the light of life will make a lot of sense to you. This might be a little bit too crazy, but we're gonna go ahead and say it anyway. It's possible that what Luffy and Nami and the Strats are in right now is some kind of version of heaven, like closer to the actual heaven than the Sky Islands in Skypiea. Skypiea is perhaps based off of Elbaf, and the ultimate authority of this land is referred to as the Sun God. This is John 1.5. This is a message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. I'm not gonna try and sit here and explain an entire religion to people that aren't familiar. I think that that is not possible. But perhaps something short and to the point that I can say is that the kingdom of light or the kingdom of God is very important to Christianity. It is said with Jesus's second coming or thinking in terms of the story of One Piece with the return of Joy Boy, he will create a new kingdom, a place of salvation for his people following apocalypse. I believe that Elbaf is supposed to be this place. Or, at the very least, this is what Joy Boy intended. Anyway guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I think maybe we bit off a little bit more than I had intended originally, but all of these thoughts, like I can't just share one part of it without all of the context and all the other important things it might relate to because it's all of it put together which makes it make the most sense and is the best argument. But just to reiterate and summarize, I think that there's something very strange happening in the country of Elbaf. I think that reality is being manipulated and I believe that the tree is actually responsible for this. I believe there to be a connection between Nika and the tree and it is possible, it is actually possible for the tree to be infused with the lineage factor of Nika. Now exactly how the tree works, we don't yet know, and I think that there's a high probability that what I've said here is not right, or is not entirely right, even if we're correct about the tree. But it's cool to think that the people and creatures here, somehow and some way, are able to bend reality. I think that all of this is fitting given the recent emphasis on Luffy as Nika and Nika as a god, specifically the god of the people of Elbaf. Given the comparisons with Nika and with Jesus, calling Nika a god of light seems accurate. Therefore, it becomes an intuitive thought that this is the kingdom of light from Christianity. It's supposed to be heaven, and that could work well with our assumption that Elbaf will be an ark full of fantasy. It also works well with our assumption that Elbaf might be paralleled with these sky islands or connected to them in some way. But at the end of the day, anything that occurs in One Piece has some sort of One Piece scientific explanation, even if that's spiritual in nature. So given comparisons with Egghead, I think that this island needs some kind of power source for it to be doing the things that we're saying that it's doing. And that power source, the same as Nika, is life itself. We are looking at the One Piece Tree of Life, and I think that it is connected to the Will of D and the inherited will as a whole. But yeah, guys, had a lot of fun making this, and I hope that what I said is understandable, or at the very least, 
it makes you think. As always, I'm curious as to what you guys think. If you're interested, check out my book, The Booms. Link is in the description. Like the video, subscribe, click the bell to be notified, join the squad. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day.